welcome back to another Music Theory session. My name is Lynette Westendorf. I'd like to thank Cascadia again for hosting these. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing it, and I've heard back from a lot of you. I know you're enjoying it, too. And uh, Rebecca tells me that there are uh, 50 people signed up for this. So I, uh, I hi to all of you whom I know, and hi to you whom we perhaps haven't met. Um, today's subject is... Um, chords and triads, and I'm going to set my timer here. Hold on. Okay. Um, a, a triad is a three-note chord. That is three notes sounded together. They can be played in melodic form. Or they can be played in block form. This is a major chord, a major triad. Chords, by the way, can, uh, can be more than three uh, notes and often are, but we're gonna talk uh, just about triads, about three note chords. This is a major triad, major third plus a perfect fifth on the outer interval, or a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. This is a minor triad with a flatted third, minor third on the bottom, perfect fifth on the outside, or if you want to count from three to five, major third here, major, minor. This one is augmented with a major third and an augmented fifth, or you can also say major third between one and three and major third between three and five. An augmented interval is um, uh, um, cut that, Rebecca. Okay. Okay. And the next, uh, the next triad that we're going to play, that we're going to show, is a diminished triad, which has a minor third on the bottom and a minor third between three and five, or a diminished fifth between one and five. It sounds like this. So we have major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Those are the four types of triads that we work with. Um, for those of you who read popular music or uh, jazz uh, lead sheets, um, this is often called a minor third with a flat five. It's a different way to say it. Um, but these are our four triad types, and now we're going to look at all of the possible triads in a major key. Much of what we're doing in this, uh, in this series, since it's so short, and we're really getting into the heart of theory studies, uh, we're, we're talking mostly about uh, major keys, and we're also talking about the more simple keys, that is, the, are, those are the keys with a fewer key signatures. That makes it a little bit easier for those of you who are new to this. This is the scale of C. And because we uh, live in a tertian system, that is uh, chords based upon thirds, we stack up thirds. Okay. Um, in our diatonic system of analysis, uh, we use Roman numerals. And for major chords, we use an uppercase Roman numeral. And for minor chords, we use a lowercase Roman numeral. In our, um, in the scale, as we play these, I'll play them all for you right now. In the scale, our triads are formed, major triads are formed on the first note of the scale, the fourth note and the fifth note of the scale. And this three chord grouping 
is, um, is very widely used in blues progressions and folk music and classical music and jazz music. This is kind of the heart of how we work around a major key. Our second, third, and sixth triads are minor. And so we use lowercase. The D minor, the E minor, and the A minor. And our seventh chord, we have a superscript of a zero because that's a diminished chord, and we've already talked about the diminished interval, uh, B to F. We have a diminished uh, fifth on the outside, so therefore we have a diminished triad. And then we're back to one again. So there's seven different chords for every major key, and that holds true for minor keys too, but they're, they function a little bit differently in minor. If you are reading um, um, popular music or lead sheets, uh, guitar music or piano music with a vocal line, you're going to also see chord names just based upon their letter name. Here are the three major chords on 1, 4, and 5 in the key of C. The two, the three, and the six are all minor, and I'm going to get out of the way here, and our seventh chord is a B diminished. So these are the diatonic chords, and this is true for every major key. What you would do if you are, <clears throat> if you want, and you should be writing these out um, on your own for practice, when you go to the key of G, for example, what you're going to do is plug that F sharp in, in the scale, in every occurrence of the F note. So in the key of G, it will sound like this. There's the F sharp on the B minor chord, C, there's our five chord. Here's our seven chord. Okay, so those are the diatonic chord types um, built upon a major scale. In this case, the key of C. One more thing about chords. That you probably already know if you've played in bands or done any arrangement or worship chords is that they're not always sounded in root position. Um, here's our C chord. We can take these three notes, C, E, and G, and open them up so that they're played uh, we'll put the G here, we'll put the E up here. You have a lot more space between the notes, and it sounds much more beautiful. If you're an arranger for vocal music, you might use this, this close position. This is called close. This one's called open. Because we've simply taken the E from the middle here, and put it up an octave. So you get a really wonderful sound. This is still a root position chord. Root position has the root, that is the first note of the triad on the bottom. If I play the E on the bottom and play it in this, uh, position with the E and the G and the C on the top. This is called first inversion. And there's one more possible position with the G on the bottom, and that's called second inversion. And when we're arranging the, uh, the inversions of the chords are where we get these beautiful 
uh, uh, connections from one chord to another. Let me just play a few. I'll try to keep them three note chords. So that, that way of changing chords makes for very smooth melodic lines. If I played all those chords, which are just C, F, and G, in root position, it would sound something like this. I'll come up here. So you can see how all of those were a root position chord. If you're a guitar player, you don't have to worry about inverting your chords in order to make a, no, a nice melodic line. But if you're a piano player, keyboard player, you do. Or if you're arranging. But I would suggest if you're working at a keyboard and you're just learning your chords, learn them root position. Learn the names of the notes in the chords. Say, for example, a C chord has C, E, and G. F chord has F, A, C. F minor, F, A flat, C. Learn those note names uh, in root position. Get familiar all around the keyboard. Thanks for joining us for these music videos. Thanks to Cascadia, and we'll see you next time. Bye.